Yeah. Um, good day, or should I say good morning? I don't know. Who has been to the party yesterday? A party. Okay, a party. Okay, three. The rest of the, well, the rest of the guys are sleeping, I guess. So, yeah. Um, dobro jutro. Mogli bi srpski, ali nećemo srpski danas. Ali možemo poslije toka da pričamo neko. Okay, as I said, my name is Milan Gabor and this is Daniel Grach, Grach and we will be talking about Android today. Uh, so, this is Balkan 2004 edition. Why? Because we are um, last couple of months and previous months and next months we are we're going to be talking about Android around uh, Europe. So, um, <clears throat> let's start. So. Um, actually, who we are? We are just two guys from the ex Yugoslavia. So we shared one state sometime long ago, and then the things uh, went wrong somewhere. So uh, we have love, fun breaking the stuff, love to play with the application. Uh, I own the company, so um, we are specialized in uh, application security. And anyway, it took like six hours to get there from Slovenia. So. Uh, where is actually Slovenia? For those that don't know, you know, because Slovenia is not on Balkan, so um, it looks like from this kind of map that's shown outside. I checked yesterday, uh, you know, Slovenia is somewhere here from Ljubljana, uh, and uh, official definition on Wikipedia is some not quite clear if Slovenia is Balkan or it's not, but from this map, uh, we can claim that Slovenia is not Balkan. But anyway, we are glad to be here. So, um, just for a short notice, we have some um, well-known hacking people also from Slovenia. Uh, maybe somebody knows this guy? Yes. Actually, this is a guy that almost looks like Edward Snowden. You know, if you take, take from the right angle. But actually, he's the guy who, is, he, who has been, and actually he still it is on the uh, FBI most wanted list. Um, because he was creator of the software that was actually behind the Mariposa botnet. Um, and it was, um, his software actually uh, was used in a botnet that was like, it was infected with like 10 to 12 million computers around the world. Um, and officially they say that only two states, only two countries in the world uh, haven't been infected. Maybe somebody would guess which two countries would that be? North Korea. North Korea is one, yeah. <coughs> That's right. And the Russia. second one? Russia. No, yeah. Russia. Okay. No. Uh, the second was South Sahara, because it officially it also it's that white spot on the internet map. So, um, <clears throat> he uh, was convicted in Slovenia. He got uh, almost four years of prison. So at the moment he's uh, writing his appeal uh, against that verdict. But uh, from the, in the United States, how many, how, how, what do you think how many years he would get for these crimes? 15? 25 to life. 25 to life? Yeah, it's somewhere between that. It's six years in, in the United States. So he's still, you know, he cannot go outside of Slovenia or uh, outside of Europe. So. But it's, it's why I'm pointing this out, because it was, um, let's say, underground story goes that uh, actually the uh, United States came to him with an offer to get a job at Hawaii. You know why at Hawaii? Snowden was there, you know? And he turned it down, you know? He would just rather go to the jail than go to, to work for the United States. So we have some famous people, you know? Um, this one got caught, and I guess there are some other hackers also from Slovenia and also from Serbia. Okay, so what are we going to be talking today uh, with me and Daniel about it? So we're going to see a little bit of uh, motivation behind why we actually did it. Uh, we will have some short 101 APK. So who has been playing with Android application already? Who has been analyzing it, decompiling it? Okay, one, two. Okay, you're gonna see that it's not that hard. Uh, so we're gonna go a little bit about uh, analysis uh, and talk about a little bit uh, about static and dynamic. And we're gonna show a little, quite few demos. So who's who? Who likes demos? 
Okay, for the demos, please, uh, we have one request with, Dan with Daniel. Don't hack wireless networks. If you hack wireless networks, when we will be showing it here, uh, you don't see the demos because it's they gonna it they won't work because we're gonna ch be playing real uh, live uh, live games, and we will have some uh, closing thoughts. Okay, where we are today with the Android so and also mobile application. Uh, actually, it's kind of complex world that we are living. You know, also if we are talking about the mobile applications, why? Because if we see, we we just see at the Android. Uh, framework, you know, there is a lot of, lot of, uh, int lot of building blocks and components that are actually part of the uh, Android framework, and this leads also that there are several uh, issues with the mobile application. Um, Fortify said already at the at the ending of last year that uh, their researchers can find vulnerabilities in about 90% of mobile applications that they have been uh, analyzing. So that's kind of, you know, um, worry about it. And also if we take a recent post from yesterday or day before, so researchers compiled a list of Android applications that allow men in the middle attacks. So they are not checking their SSL certificates for HTTPS connection, so you can play with uh, um, you can actually set yourself in the middle of the application and the server. So this kind of the this kind of the reasons um, brought us to these things that there is actually a big need for mobile apps, and we also got a lot of requests from our clients to test mobile applications, also from Android and iOS and um, um, other operating systems. And when we are looking at this mobile application, so it, it seems like the development you now feels like 90s, so a lot of SQL injection on the server side, a lot of problems with the client side, um, and we have been analyzing also a lot of, not on, but mostly Slovenian uh, mobile applications, and we see a lot of, lot of issues there, ranging from very simple um, to very complicated stuff that's there. Okay, um, 101 APK. So actually what is APK? How to get it, how to decompile it, how to test it, and at the end, how to exploit it. Uh, we're gonna go just, just uh, quick through it. So it's actually a package file format, nothing else. Um, and um, I, I didn't, knew, didn't knew this, but you can actually, who's running BlackBerry here? Does anybody has BlackBerry? No, BlackBerry. <laughs> but you can run APK, so Android on BlackBerry with this version. So I didn't use this, but Wikipedia says so it should be. It should be, but I never tried this. So, uh, so APK is actually, as I said, package, package format. It's nothing more than a zip. So it's written exclusively in Java with native libraries. You can have native libraries to access the, the other parts of sub-lying sub, uh, Android system. And you have different components like activities, services, broadcast receivers, and things like that. So, does somebody is the Java Android developer here? Is somebody developing Android? Okay, three. So this is not nothing new for you, right? You have some resources, has its source code. You compile it. Uh, you get the Dalek byte code, put it in the classes. You sign it. Um, and actually, there you test it or push push it to the Google um, Google Play Store, uh, Google Play. So that's a, that that's it for the building uh, APK. But what's uh, we're gonna also see what's the opposite side. So how do you reverse it? So how do you get the APK? The first thing is you can copy it from the phone. So you just get ADB. Uh, pull or cop uh, and uh, get the APK from the phone. You can copy from the backup. You can create a backup with um, kind of applications that you have on your mobile phone and you get the APK. Or you just go, if you know the application full name, you just go to the uh, uh, that URL and it's, it will download it for you. So this is the first step. You need the APK. Or there's another way you can download it from untrusted source, but I don't, I'm not sure if you want to run it from untrusted source. Who, who wants to run APK from untrusted source taken from Russian forum? Does Google also count as an untrusted 
source. Sorry? Does Google also count as an interested source? <laughs> Good question. Anyway, never mind. Yeah, well, um, sometimes yes, sometimes no. But, but from untrusted sources, some kind of forums, I mean, but maybe sometimes you can find also good stuff on the Google. Also. So the next step is to, uh, is to compile it. So if you pull it from the phone, like here, like in one step with ADB, then just unzip it, uh, get a classes dex, and just to compile it with uh, JD GUI because it does everything for you. Uh, or you can use, if you want to look different in Smalley, you can, uh, um, there's, a, there's a second way to, uh, to do it. Um, Daniel is going to show a little bit later, now after two slides, I think, how this is done. And uh, these are the tools that are used uh, to um, reverse engineer APK. So dex to jar, so you get from classes dex to jar, uh, from classes uh, files uh, to, let's say, reverse Java, and APK, APK tool. If you want to go the simplest way, you know, because uh, sometimes you don't want to go through all the steps, although they're quite simple. You just go uh, and upload your APK to this, uh, this, this site and it decompiles it for you. Uh, so Daniel is going to show you just a little bit so how fast and how easy and actually what you get from the decompiling the, uh, the source. The source. Okay, I will just show you how to easy it uh, to get the source out of the package. So here we have an uh, Android package and it's nothing but uh, unzip file. So let's do an unzip. And here we have the classes dex file. This is actually the Dolvik <coughs> bytecode. Do you familiar with Dolvik? It's, it's like uh, Java bytecode but optimized for Android, uh, uh, the Android phone. So I'm gonna transform this Dalvik bytecode to Java bytecode. This takes some time. And now I will run JDGUI to show you the actual source code. And here you can see the source is obfuscated. You have a lot of A's, B's, C's. But actually you can get through it and if you manage to do some string replacement and stuff like that, you will be able to read at some time and understand the source. How many of you use JDGUI? Okay. How many of you do know how to program in Java? Okay, great. So you're gonna, I, I'm gonna need your help afterwards because we're gonna read some uh, some statement and we'll try to figure it out what it works, what it does. Okay. Okay. <coughs> okay. So uh, we have an application. So what actually you should be check if you're doing a security assessment or penetration testing for a mobile application. So definitely there is uh, transport security. So we want to see how the traffic goes back and forth with the application, uh, from application to the server and the back. Uh, we want to see how the sessions are hand, uh, how the session is handled. So if it's uh, the right way or the wrong way, if the certificates are validated, so uh, so we cannot go in man in the middle, uh, we cannot execute man in the middle attacks. And there, if there are some other protections like compiler view, or maybe if there's some kind of data is lying in SQL, SQLite database, some file caching. Um, very important is also to check the logs. What actually the uh, the application spits into the logs, into the log files, because sometimes you can find there very interesting uh, stuff, especially in the logging, like usernames and password just dumping through the console. Uh, and the next step is binary analysis, so they compile the same way as we show it to the, the application, if there's some kind of obfuscation. Uh, we also check, you need to check client-side injection, is this possible to do some kind of uh, JavaScript injection from a server side if somebody is man in the middle and wants to own the 
device or at least application. And of course, there's a very interesting part, third part libraries that are um, already lying there um, and the application is using them. So you want to test the application, you know, the, the simplest way is the start simulator um, well, with a proxy. We will show that we are using not the simulator, but the real device. Any guesses why? It's faster. It's faster, exactly. Simulator <laughs> is quite, quite slow. Uh, although they say it's if you enable um, kind of uh, graphic hardware, um, acceleration it should be okay because after one conference some guy approached and said it should be better but we're still using the real device because it's a little bit faster so you should just install application emulator device and use Fireshark, Fiddler, Zap, Burp, whatever you want Charles if they're using the um, uh, Mac OS run application and then just see the logs, dumps, crashes, files and everything that's going on. so this is actually what you see if you're uh, doing a man in the middle or you're running a proxy so you see that a lot of application is sending also uh, can somebody guess what this is? MAC address of what? Uh, of device wireless ID yeah and this is also sent to the normally sent to the server in this case why do you think they're using it? Why the yeah for identification of device so you know which kind of device are used so and also some other interesting stuff if you want to, uh, if you sometimes want to see what's actually sending to the server all kind of resolutions and uh, your uh, Android versions and your uh, um, serial numbers and things like that. So you, this, is, see, this is the request going to, um, to the server and what, one, what we see that's coming from the server it's uh, very often we see this can somebody read this? What's actually hidden there? Base 64? Well, you can try it, but um, you don't get anything. Yet. So it's not Base 64, but it's encrypted, obfuscated, change it to binary or something. Now, a lot of thing, a lot of applications are doing this. So if you are going man in the middle, uh, if you want to try to read this, it's almost impossible to do it, right? Or somebody can do it. If somebody can read this and de decrypt it? Gerzic can. Who? Gerzic, I'm sure. Who is Gerzic? You will, you will uh, see him. Okay. <laughs> Later in the day. Later in the day. So, uh, around 3 p.m. when he gets up? Yeah, uh, <laughs> around 3 p.m. when he gets over there to present. Okay, great. Then we're gonna get him this and, you know, see what's actually coming up. But it's really hard to get, you know, it's really hard, hard to see. And here are some variables, here are just some words, here are just some scores, here is uh, some kind of results that's actually bringing back. Um, there are also kind of other tools that you could use, uh, like Dexter, it gives you all the, let's say, classes, decompilation, uh, what kind of permissions, services, and all this stuff. Um, so you can easily see what the application does. Or you can use this one from, uh, I think he's from Turkey, Ivan Balic, uh, Ibrahim Balic, somewhere like that. He gets everything. You just upload the APK and you got the sources, you got the dumps, strings, URLs, even the network traffic that is going on um, from the application. He's that guy that actually uh, took down uh, the Google Play when he was playing with it, so he sent a couple of uh, APKs for the Google Play and the uh, uh, Google Play went down. So he found a vulnerability, uh, you know, uh, while testing his finding he may have crashed Google Play a couple of times, so. Uh, he's a really nice guy, so if you wanna, he's on Twitter, you should follow him. But um, you must know how to uh, read Turk, Turkish language or use Google uh, Translate to it. Okay, if we are going for now for a static analysis, first, that's why I was asking you, first you need how to read and understand Java code. Well, you don't have to know all the classes, you just want to know a little bit of programming and to see how it's actually done. Uh, with static analysis, you cannot see the all replies. Why? Because the application is not running, so you don't see what's actually sending to the server and getting back. 
uh, and you have quite few problems with the application is obfuscated somehow or renamed like we have been seen before. How many of you can have in your mind, you know, if you have like 100 classes with one Java, one APK application with name A, how many can you can map this kind of relations if you have 100 A classes? I guess it's really hard to, to get it, you know, and the next class is B and C and AA and BB and CC. So, but it's very important for static analysis to identify important segments in the code. So, like, what would be in important segments in a code? Writing to socket. Writing? To socket. Yeah, communicating to the server, writing to socket, HTTP connection, sending, encryption if there are some... Crypto libraries. Yeah, crypto libraries if they are used, how they are used, uh, writing to logs, or yes, some... Yeah, SQLite, SQLite communication, things like that. So, uh, because like 70%, you know, 70, 80% is most of the GUI stuff that it's not interesting, but sometimes it is. And Daniel is going to be showing why GUI is also some, sometimes important if you are playing the games. Why? Because, you know, with calling one method, it gives you all the secrets and the uh, keys and uh, solutions. <laughs> But it's really nice to uh, identify that important segment. So if the application says what? Dump answers? Like, you know, dump answers? It's a good method to start with the, inside the application. Okay, so when you're looking at the, uh, uh, analyzing static applications or looking at the source code, sometimes you need to be feeling like happy, you know, that button on the Google. Uh, and now I'm uh, going to ask you if you can help me to read this. So this is excerpt from one Java code and it's from very important, well, very well-known Slovenian game. Uh, and we have been, we decompiled it and we saw this uh, inside, the, uh, inside the source code. Can you, can somebody guess what actually this does? Who said that he knows how to write Java code? Okay, what does it do? Yeah, save. Okay, saving something to the server, right? Can somebody guess what T and so U means? U is username, yeah, and what is T? Time. No? Token. No? Do you have word in, uh, in a Serbian language like Točka? Score. Score. Score? Yeah, so this is a score. So this is a score, this is a username. Sending to the server. <laughs> so after you play the game, this is actually called to the server. So, how would you emulate this kind of a call? Just type anything in the other spot. Exactly. Just type this in URL and you are the top scorer of the day. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really that simple. You know, it's really, it's, well, I think it's quite high because in Slovenia it's like 20,000 game plays per day. So, he's, we have been a little bit calculating. So, he, he gets quite a lot of money at the end of the month, you know, just pulling the banners on, on this kind of the um, game. And if you're not feeling lucky, you know, you'd get something like this, you know, and sometimes uh, you don't get the whole decompilation uh, from the, you don't get the Java code because uh, the JD GUI uses a pretty old uh, Java decompiler. So you get, you get this, you know, and sometimes it's really hard. Um, hard to read and hard to imagine what actually uh, the application is doing. Um, and beside the static analysis, there's dynamic analysis we already shown before. So monitoring changing uh, traffic with proxy. So you're man in the middle and changing what's going back and forth to the server. If the server, uh, the traffic is not, uh, let's say, obfuscated, encrypted, or some kind of modified, then it's fine if it just scores sends. Uh, um, in a plain text there, but if it's, it's encrypted, then you have hard time. There's also debugging, but uh, you know, debugging is kind of, you know, step by step, you know, you have to find a way where to uh, put the break, break points and um, step one by step. And the other thing is that we are using, um, it's kind of reflection. Uh, who knows what reflection is? Okay, some of them. So what's actually reflection? So, you know, it's a, Language, actually it's a language ability to inspect dynamically class, classes and methods and things. 
and attributes at other things at the runtime. So when the application is running, you can call it, and actually it's like Java looking at Java. You now it's like you know, dynamically looking what's, what kind of classes do we have, what kind of variables do we have. So what's actually the difference between the debugging and the reflection? With the reflection, we have a higher level of view. So we have all the classes that we have decompiled, all the methods, uh, even they're, they're set to private, uh, protected and another uh, attribute set to the methods and uh, uh, attributes, you can, you, you can change it. Um, and you can actually, what's most, most interesting, you can interact with the application in the real time. So if you are playing the game on this phone, you can actually, over the tool, interact uh, in real time with the application. So we're going to see how this is uh, done. So there's, this is all also the other features, so you can access all the variables, methods, change your values. Um, we are also using a bean shell uh, because it helps a lot of things to do it. Because sometimes, you know, we are also, we don't have too much time and sometimes we are also lazy and that's why we use bean shell. Uh, and you can write directly Java code and compile it uh, uh, dynamically, so you don't have to repackage APK, uh, write Java code, repackage, put it on and run it, but actually you can uh, write Java code and run it dynamically. But it's the best way to show it uh, after, uh, after a couple of slides. So why did we use Beanshell? Because it's Java interpreter, uh, it's free to use, it's quite small, uh, it's, and it's natural scripting language for Java. We have seen other solution uh, like Fino and other tools, they are using Python because, and since they using Python, you need to have kind of conversion from Python to Java and sending back and forth. And using Java also on the client side, it helps much easier, and that's why we are using also Beanshell. Okay, when you analyze the application, you see a lot, a lot of interesting things, you know, like pins, authentication pins, and system logs, <laughs> internal IPs. Um, we have seen a lot of applications that uh, store um, internal IPs in their APKs and sometimes even usernames and passwords to the protected content. Uh, and a lot of times you have uh, like testing cases, you know, like testing classes inside APK because they didn't clean it up before they publish it to the Google Play. So um, just looking at the source code, you've Sometimes you know, we found really interesting stuff there. Okay, so we have now static analysis, we have dynamic analysis. Uh, we have been looking at the other authors that have been going around the conferences and presenting the stuff, but they really, we really wanted some more. You know, we really wanted to have kind of runtime, uh, runtime tool that we can change uh, the application in, uh, in, in real time. So to interact in real time, call the methods, uh, and other dump the, all the variables, and or even create a cheating platform. So we're going to show you how you can uh, create one cheat in like six, seven lines of code, something like this, you know. And application is actually going to play itself, you know. So and you can win all the time. So we went, we dig deeper. Daniel almost uh, was feeling desperate because uh, he tried several methods and none of them work. But then again, we came up with the vaccine and Daniel is going to be telling you more about it. So actually we came up with a great tool. I think it's great. Uh, what vaccine is, it's a tool for dynamical analysis and uh, what it does, it takes the Android application, it uh, injects a service into it, and then connects through the service to the application. Besides the service, it injects also bin shell. And uh, Milan already told what bin shell is. This enables, uh, enables us uh, to get all the variables at uh, runtime, change them, uh, run some Java code at runtime, and do the dynamical analysis. Here you can see the architecture of the scene. On the left side, it's just a modified application with the injected vaccine service and the uh, bean shell library. Uh, the connection is established through ADB tool with the help of the TCP protocol. 
And on the right side, you can see Voxin, which consists of the user interface, a bash script, and uh, a component that is called the manifest changer. The bash script is actually the heart of Voxin. Uh, it does all the repackaging stuff and so on. You can ask me later about uh, the details. I won't go into that because we want to show you some demos. So actually, what is, what, what is possible with Voxin? It's, I don't know how to say it. Let's show it. Here you can see the user interface of Voxin. On the left upper side, you can see all the uh, objects that are used at runtime by the application. On the, the level below, uh, you can see the activities. They are added automatically during the activity lifecycle management of Android. And after right-clicking with the mouse button on some activity or object, we simply return all the fields that this activity or object has. And on the right side, you have uh, a view that is called a watch, where you can add some variables and monitor how they are changing during the execution of the application. And below, you, it's the scripting part. Here you can write bin shell scripts, Java source code, and it will be executed at runtime on the behalf of the running application. So let's do a demo. But before, I give you this to read. <laughs> you got it? OK, let's do it. You can see the phone on the left side. It's projected. And now I will run Voxin. <clears throat> so this is the par part of the presentation that you shouldn't be hacking around with interface here because otherwise uh, it will not it will not work. It's starting. It's not working. No, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, that's the problem with live demos. You know, we have uh, pre-filmed already, but we really want to see. We really want to show you uh, in a real time how does it work. Um, but somebody knows. Uh, we try to we try to take the let's say application in a native language. So in Serbia, we have found this rich uh, rich and Slovenia is Besedunjak, so you can play with. But it's, uh, the, the problem is that there are only few users playing in, in Serbia. But anyway, actually, actually one. <laughs> actually one. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> we have quite, storm. we have, what? Be in this storm, right? And this would be the only uh, person playing the phone. No, yeah. no, it's showing the other users, ah, okay. so. The other users. So let's run the game. But it's quite important. We have played in, in Romanian language, in French language. And trust me, uh, we don't have, we didn't know any of the Romanian and French words, but we were winning the game every time that we. Okay, run. here you can see I just click on the uh, activity of the right mouse button, and uh, Muxim will return me all the fields that this activity has. So you can see the fields are, uh, the code was obfuscated. Uh, obviously, you have a lot of A's, B's, and so on. But if I click here on show methods and do again the right click, also the methods are displayed and some are obfuscated, but some are not. And this is interesting. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we don't know why actually this dump answer wasn't obfuscated because the rest of the, the rest of uh, the the methods were, but th th this was was, and you know that's it's really good to look into the, the source code and to see if you get dumb answers. Uh, can anybody guess what it does? 
<laughs> from the name of the method, you know, it's, it's really. But just to see that we are, re we are actually running inside the application, Daniel is going to be uh, executing now the script. You now see here, so toast, calling a toast, make text, hello, balcon, and we're going to see that it's actually running here. So we are running at the runtime in application. So we can control it totally to, you know, to call the methods to... Uh, but uh, if you do your statical analysis, you figure out where the answers are stored. So let's print them out. And watch this in ADB Locket. And you can see here the answers. Uh, well, I have learned uh, Tirilitsa uh, when I was 6 and 10. But afterwards, I forgot it. But you know, what, what does it say? To recruit. Recruitirati? Yeah. Uh, ah, OK. But we can do better, so let's. So Around we have the board, so we can, you know, we can go, the, the point of the game is to, you know, to play the game and to get the words. Okay, I got one. But I will execute this dump answers method and let's see what happens on the left upper part of the game. You can see the answers dump. You see, we actually now enabled to, to get the answer. So, recrutirati, recru, oh, where to start? Uh, or you know you you get the all things that uh, here how you should uh, draw the, the the words together to get uh, six words ten words and everything like this so just calling one method runtime or we can we can make it even better since we know that uh, since we know that the answers are stored here we can write. One, two, three, four, six, seven, okay, about 10 lines of code. And uh, what does this code does? We get, here are the answers, uh, here are the, our answers. So here is all possibilities, here are the other answers. So we run it, and then actually the application uh, copies the answers to the results table, and you win all the time. So I have run the, uh, the solution, let's say this, and uh, we need to wait another minute for the results. But in the meantime, I can show you that uh, Voxin is actually cool because during the last refreshment, if I again right click on the game view activity, for example, the, the variables that have been changed during the last refreshment have a red color, so you spot uh, changes, changes uh, uh, before. So let's wait another 40 seconds. Yeah, because it's really hard, you know, if you have like 1000 variables, it's really hard to see what has been changed or what now. But with this way, you see that this one has been changed, this one, this one. Uh, 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 so you can easily see. Question. Would it, for instance, be very complicated to make a color map out of that, the whole code, and actually make this more visual? Oh, uh, well, we are now not. You mean the, with the connection to the source code? No, in connection to ch things changing in the, in the code. Uh, Runtime. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it's a Just good suggestion. It's, it's a good suggestion. We can also we also try to go into the deep, the deep. You know, if you want to have a, like score like ten thousand, if you want to go, which variable contains ten thousand? Just remember the three hundred and one point is the max result. Okay. Uh, and you can see we have the max score. Yeah. So bulk, uh, bulk on two K for it. It's it, it's a winner at the moment. So. Uh, Regarding your question, you know, we tried also to go into the deep to search all the classes, all the methods, but the application dies after going into depth of four yeah, uh, because it's running out of resources. Yeah. Because there are a lot of so his heap space is a, is a, is the problem. Mm -hmm. But you can get a lot of uh, interesting stuff with it. You know, just inject into the Google Play, and but we're gonna show you this a little bit later. Okay, so uh, that was last year. We started and playing with it, and then the CCC conference came in. You know, uh, it's also connected with CCC. It's the same as Balkan uh, this uh, conferences, and we got we have seen very good presentation from uh, Colin Mulliner, 
And he was talking about uh, Dalvik, dynamic Dalvik instrumentation, but on different way, because now we are changing APKs. So you need to have APK, uh, take it down, change it, upload it back to the device or emulator and run it. Uh, and uh, so we went like, hmm, can we somehow reuse his, uh, uh, his research? And so we don't have to change APK. So if you're going a little bit deeper uh, in, in, into the drawing system, can we change uh, libraries so we can dynamically inject into one process in the Zygote process, uh, this our vaccine tool, and then you'll... Yeah, so we came up with a solution. We exchanged some uh, mails with Colin, uh, which I'm very thankful for his help. And uh, what we do is uh, using the hijack, his uh, program of the framework, and uh, hijacking the Zygote process and injecting uh, all the libraries that Vaccine uses. And we are actually hooking the Android app uh, on sort activity. So we are injecting our library into it, hooking this method, and after uh, our stuff is executed, uh, we uh, we proceed with the original method. So I will show you another demo, and um, here I will show you how to easy it is to insert vaccine or connect to the Google Play. So in this time, we are actually not changing APKs anymore. So we are changing a little bit uh, layers down to Android and cooking the. Uh, API calls and then injecting the same uh, vaccine services into the uh, running uh, process. Here I have everything in place, so uh, let's run the demo. Sorry. And uh, here his framework is actually uh, listening for the uh, application to start. So let's run Play Store and you can see the library has been injected. Now let's run Vaccine. And you can here see that we are on Google Play. And from here now, you can do pretty much everything uh, with the vaccine with this approach. You can see here the username that is uh, registered to the phone, but don't worry, it's fake. Yeah, well, uh, Daniel really uses very interesting usernames and passwords on Gmail, like Ishtof Batina. You know. so. So, so it's actually now it's running inside the Play Store, and we haven't modified. So APK is the same as it came from the uh, uh, with uh, with the phone and updated with the uh, uh, with this. So what are the one quick question? Um, this injection can it only be done by uh, ADB or can it actually in theory also be done from a, an app different application itself? Uh, not from different application because you need a rooted phone. That's yeah, okay. the that's the difference between the the two the two methods that we are using pros and cons, so with APK, with uh, APK and Android. If we have APK, there is no need for a rooted phone. You can do this on non-rooted phone, ADB, well, ADB needs to be enabled because we are pushing and uh, you can application. do it also over the network, so the port is open, yeah. you can connect to the port and yeah. it's no problem. Yeah, so there is an issue with untrusted sources, you have to download it, modify it and upload to the phone with the APK. Uh, but no, no need for rooted phone. With, uh, with uh, injecting directly into Android, uh, there is no need for APK modification, so you're just injecting in the runtime, uh, but you need rooted phone. And injecting shared libraries, and that's why you need a little bit more skills, because it's, we have been having some issue at the beginning, but because compiling and uh, hijacking the native calls when starting the application, but it, it's a way, so. But so if I understand it correctly, with the first method you can only attack screw around with the application yes. itself, the APK, and yes. with the second method you can screw around with any kind of application. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, we can use, we have uh, wrote uh, some things like you can 
call it a uh, vaccine and uh, send it uh, zero SMS messages. You can get a phone instance and send that with uh, this kind of call code, it's like 50, 20, like 20 lines of code, and you can send runtime. You know, you don't have to. Automation tool, actually. Yeah, it's actually an automation tool, so you can play with it, access to the variable. So that's you have access to on the underlying Android framework. You can execute the API, create objects, and so on. Yeah. So definitely there are changes ahead, you know. There's a possible different kind of usage. Uh, and we proved it's not only for, the, for Android, uh, this kind of usage. We tested one client, uh, requested us to test this year to test Oracle Forms. Have anybody uses, used Oracle Forms? No, no, they're still not dead. No, I, I was also convinced that they are dead because Oracle announced that they're going to be retiring it. But at that moment, there are still some companies developing in Oracle Forms. So uh, we had Oracle Forms project for testing, and we took it took us like one day to change it, a vaccine, and actually we inject it into the Oracle Forms, and we are running inside the Oracle Forms, getting all the variables, the same as Android. And there are some also kind of crazy ideas, like, uh, you know, my son always want to have me, you know, to hack his Minecraft, you know, game when he is playing. So Minecraft, maybe, you know, inject it into the Minecraft, you know, and just having fun with this kind of. Uh, and definitely you can create the ultimate cheating platform out of it, you know. So we're going to, uh, we're going to see, uh, we still have one demo. Uh, left at the end, so the final demo. But you're going to see that this is also quite good possibility. So just before the demo, some final thoughts. It's quite some small script, small Java GUI tool written in Eclipse, and it's never going to be finished, you know, because we have other things to do. Uh, but it's on the GitHub. We, you will get the URL. You can t take it, play with it, uh, send an email or some suggestions. And it can help testers, you know, to write some test cases to test the application. Um, hackers, cheaters. And definitely we are open for suggestions and comments and things like that. So, um, since we have been in August, uh, we have been doing our presentation also, also at the DEF CON, uh, Wolf Sheep and B-Sides in Las Vegas. Uh, we prepared, you know, if, if you presented Las Vegas, you need to present some online game, you know, you cannot go, you know, uh, out of Vegas to present. So Daniel is going to show you, Daniel is going to show you one more game, how to see, and you will get, you will see how uh, game developers, you know, sometimes misses or sometimes they're missing some things because they really want to optimize or make it, make their life much more easier. need to run another time. Okay, we will be playing blackjack. Who is playing blackjack? Okay, you're gonna help me because I, I, I suck at blackjack. So uh, let's run the application. <coughs> uh, in this game, uh, can you put uh, oh, PTA? Video? Sorry. So you see, we will be running this uh, blackjack. So in the real, real time, you see that's the screen that I'm running. Can I run? Can I play? No, no. I want to no. play, I want to play. Not yet. <laughs> ah, the connection lost. Oh, shit. Oh, shit, doesn't sound good. Well, you know, this is quite, you know, quite used phone because, you know, it's really, it's really our favorite test phone. That's why it's a little bit you know, not working pretty well, but you're gonna see it. So. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, uh, I will play it uh, so live. So we are doing live demo uh, and we are playing uh, online. So let me let me sit somewhere here, buy into the game. Okay, let's wait for another round. But I will execute this code. Let's see. Okay, you can see now the four next cards that I will get. So this is coming from the server, you know? It's not actually, it's a playing, because server sends you 
you know, uh, the, 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 the array of the cards that are coming, you know, it's, it doesn't send you every time the... But you can also see the next seed card in, on the graphical user interface, so... Can you see here, two? So, spade of two? So, uh, what should I do? I have 14 and two, should I hit or stand? Hit, okay. So you see, it's it's 16 and three. Hit, okay. Seven. Should no. I hit? No, hit. So I stand. Okay. So um, as you see, so these are the next cards are coming. So if you want to check uh, for the bank <laughs> and other users, so it's. <laughs> Stop working. Stopped working. Oh, something is doing. But, mm. Yeah. The, the phone doesn't sure, respond. It's like a suspicious behavior. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> no, suspicious. But maybe we can show you. you, you maybe we can show you. Can you show the code? What actually the code that's running behind that in vaccine? Uh, yeah, first of all, here I put some resources into a hash map, which I use later. So this is why we put in a resource because before you have seen here the cards. That's why, because we want to show the cards, not to look at the GUI that the cards were getting here, so you know what next card is going to be. After that, coming. after that, I am just uh, running in a loop in a new thread and uh, sure. displaying this uh, this variable, which is stored in some some game app VG or something like that, and just printing it out. And below that, I am uh, replacing the card that's, that is actually drawn to the to the user interface. So nothing special here and here I'm sleeping. I'm that's sleeping it. and starting. So actually that's it, you know, that's really, you know, magic that's uh, bring, that enables you to win all the, uh, all the game or at least you would have a better chance for for winning. You know, it's not that complicated. You just let you now have to uh, know a little bit of Java programming and be a little bit patient to find where actually this variable is hit uh, hidden in uh, in a class because you know with uh, obfuscation and changing the names and uh, um, of the classes and the methods. But that's it. You know. So since our time is up, uh, are there any questions? Uh, in Slovenia, we. Pretty yeah. So. I have a question. Sure. Well, I consider myself as a beginner, so this may be some dumb to some uh, somebody. But when you decompile uh, yeah. your APK, does it uh, is it ev uh, every time obfuscated or not? Because I saw uh, this time when you uh, open Google Play, it was it wasn't off off uh, off obfuscated. No, it's not always time. It depends from the developer. So. If they run it through some uh, Android guard or something like this, and they put it, but some, some but this Google Play is the uh, Gaps version because yeah. it's uh, open source ROM and it's from Cyanogen yeah. mode. So yeah. because of this, it's not so yeah, but yeah, it depends. It's also different obfuscation, different kind of method, what kind of application they are using. But, uh, but most I most of the the. Uh, these days, application are some kind of obfuscated. I think Google Play is uh, actually, how to say, uh, I don't know how to say. They, they, they are for what? Obfuscator. Sorry. Well, we can talk later. Okay. So just stop us, drop us a note, maybe so, because we are running late. Some other questions? You said that the vaccine follows what variables are changing. Yeah. So, for example, uh, I could be searching for some variables that are connected to some or virus, and I can rotate the phone and it will show me uh, where are those variables exactly in the code. Uh, is it going to uh, say which variables are changing? Uh, yeah, but actually, let's keep it. Actually, um, Vaccine is showing you the changes during the last refreshment. If you have an activity and uh, click on it with the right mouse button, he will show you the, uh, the variables that have been changed in this activity. So you need to spot this activity in order. Because we, we can do deep search or something like that, uh, but we are limited with uh, the heap. 
Java heap and uh, the Android phone crashes. Yeah, but seeing it's actually it's going every now I don't know two three seconds. You know what from that class that you have opened it. It goes and it refreshes all the variables, and it spots that they have been changing. It changes the color, so you can easily spot. But, but you can you can set it. Uh, let me see. We uh, You can have here if you want find the variable. You can set it as a watch, and here here you will have the, all the variables. Just that variables that are interested for you. Just can bring this to this uh, this pane and to this list, and it will show you all the variables that are changing. So, so that's it. Are there any other questions? If not, you can find the zip with vaccine on our GitHub. Uh, and if you have questions, we will be here uh, for today. Tomorrow we are leaving. So, thank you very much, and I hope you have a good time.